Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Don't you just hate it? Every time you switch on the TV, scroll through Facebook, or read a newspaper, it's Muslims have done this and Muslims have done that. They're barbaric, this religion is dangerous, etc., etc., etc. The saddest thing is that so many people out there believe it. It's people like you and I who need to dismantle these misconceptions by showing how beautiful Islam is. If it wasn't for such amazing Dawah organizations out there, many people wouldn't be Muslim today. One such amazing organization is the Islamic Diversity Center. For over 17 years now, they've been building bridges within communities and calling people towards Islam through education, awareness, engagement and empowerment. Their amazing work has resulted in hundreds of people accepting Islam and thousands more understanding that Islam is not about killing and murder. Rather, it is a peaceful religion full of understanding, harmony and worship. In order to continue guiding the masses, they urgently need to raise £50,000. That's just 500 people donating £100 each. Now, as Muslims, if we can't sacrifice our time and resources to call people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then at least we should sacrifice a tiny percentage of our wealth which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with. Please donate £100 today and earn Sadaqa Jariya on your scale of good deeds from now until the end of the Day of Judgment where your only hope of entering Jannah is through the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Please lastly hit the share button which is like a khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to Newcastle Fast FM. And today, inshallah, we have a very special show. Um, we also have a special guest joining us today, Dr. Zainab Imam. So, assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you for yes. having me again. Oh, you're very welcome. We love to learn from you, of course, and all the extra experience that you have that we don't have. So we love to have you on the show. But to get started today, inshallah, we're going to talk about how do you know when you're ready for marriage? And I'm going to start off with you, Dr. Zainab. How do you know you're ready? Actually, I have been thinking about that question and my answer is, I don't think there's any sign or anything that will let you know that you're ready. I think it depends on you as a person. It depends on your upbringing, perhaps your culture or where in the world you are. And it also depends on the time. So, for instance, let's say 50 years ago or 60 years ago, a girl might feel ready at 16. And maybe another 30 years ago, she might feel ready at 18. And now it's not unusual to find people not feeling ready even at 26 or 28 or even 30. So uh, I'm not certain there's any specific age or any specific thing that you would be looking for as a person. But we are Muslims. Marriage is the sunnah of the prophet. He wants us to get married. And I will say that as soon as you are eligible, so you're old enough, you're independent, you understand yourself, you understand what marriage may entail and what is expected of you and you have a suitable suitor or spouse to be. And this is for both, um, I'm referring to both men and women, then you should feel ready. I don't know if I've made any sense. Yeah, I totally understand what you're saying. Um, wa alaikum salam to all the listeners who have tuned in to the show, by the way. Um, so jazakallah khair for tuning in, everyone. But um, as 
you said I think one of the most important things especially and and it works both ways for man and woman and this is to know what is required of you as a wife or as a husband and for a husband you need to be financially stable enough to support your wife so I think one of the signs that you're ready is that you're earning enough to at least like be providing for your wife personally this is just something that um I um think and then as well as a wife you need to be ready to support your husband so yeah and that comes with the duties of being a wife in Islam so I think it's important I think that's one of the aspects personally for me that would kind of tell someone if you are ready for marriage and um I think another thing as well is like the intention like thinking about why you want to get married and um so like are you wanting to get married because all your friends are getting married like I don't think someone like that is ready for marriage I think it's about having the right intention and as we know it marriage completes half of our deen so it is it is an important part of our religion so we need to um treat it as such and then also like is your intention for example because you're unhappy and do you think marriage will fix that and if that is the case I don't think that is the correct intention either because you are supposed to fix things yourself before you get married so yeah definitely and as um hr hr has just mentioned here maturity is definitely very important in this so yeah i don't know if you've got anything else to add to that dr zainab or if we can move on to ikram and rukaya as in what you think makes yeah. you ready for marriage yeah I, I guess as i said before it depends on who you are but it's also about understanding what marriage is i do you feel ready for those responsibilities do you feel ready to be somebody's wife do you feel ready to be somebody's husband do I, are you psychologically mature enough to handle the conflicts that will inevitably arise in marriage? Have you had read enough? Have you attended a course? Has your parents sat you down to talk to you about what it really means? And, um, you know, so it's about being clear about you, who you are as a person and what you really want. And if you feel that you are capable of going through because marriage, ideally, you want to go in not to just taste and then run out. You want to, you know, enter into that relationship for the long haul. So if you feel ready for all those responsibilities, then yes, definitely go for it. Jazakallah. I agree with everything that Dr. Zainab is saying. I think she's uh, making very, very good points. I especially agree with more of the... Um, mental aspects because of course you want to be financially ready to support a wife if you are a male and as a female as well you want to be also ready to support your husband in the way that you are meant to um islamically but also it depends on the person like are you actually willing and able to give that support because a lot of it is emotional rather than physical as well so jazakallah dr zainab yeah alhamdulillah Okay, do you have anything to add as well? Um, no, not really. I think, mashallah, like everything I've said is true. I think uh, intention is probably the most important one as well. Because um, if you don't have the right intention, then you're not going into it for the right reasons. And you can go in like, before you're actually ready. And yeah, as you said, like the mental aspect, being able to handle any uprising like conflicts and understand the responsibilities that comes with um, having a, like, a significant other. So, yeah, I agree. I'm not sure what else I can do. That's different from what you said. 
Yeah, Jazakallah khair for that, Rukayya. So we have a question here by HRHR. Um, and this is, aren't some women easily swayed by the independent women mindset? The world is changing our mindsets for the wrong re reason, independence, pursuing our own career, etc. And yeah, I definitely agree with that, that some women are being pushed in this direction, um, you know, with the feminism movement and all of those things. Um, it's definitely not the same world that we used to live in. And as Muslims, we just have to be aware of our responsibilities as Muslim women, and we have to make sure that we do not neglect those. We are allowed to obviously pursue our own career, etc. cetera. Um, but marriage is still an important part of our religion, and we shouldn't neglect the duties that we have as Muslim women in a relationship. Um, I don't know if Dr. Zainab, you have anything extra to add to that as well? What, what I was going to say is that it's, it's a very delicate balance. You know, be, be, um, when we talk about independence and marriage, the fact that you're married shouldn't remove your independence. Marriage should make you fulfill not just you know your relationship with your husband but fulfill your own relationship one with yourself and with god so pursuing a career and marriage shouldn't be mutually exclusive and being independent as a person shouldn't also stop you from having a fulfilling relationship within a marriage setting and i think it's about understanding because I think one of the things that is causing problems, especially within the Muslim community and marriage, and the fact that there's quite a huge breakdown of marriages is because many people get into marriage without actually understanding themselves and thinking that marriage is going to solve problems. But then when they get in there, they realize that actually what they want might be different. It is important that we are very clear about what we want for ourselves and also within that marriage before getting ourselves into it. And we shouldn't rush into marriage. It should be a decision that is made very carefully and not something we rush into. Yeah. That's just the last um, comment I'll make with regards to that. Yeah, Jazakallah here, Dr. Zainab. Thank you for that. Um, that we did see a comment by Brother Sa Saeed. Um, you are allowed to join this, inshallah. It is for both um, men and women. Obviously, we are focusing on the women's perspective more because we ourselves are women and it is dedicated towards women. However, like, do tune in and inshallah, hopefully we all benefit from this conversation, inshallah. So just moving on from that and going into the topic of choosing your traits and what are we looking for as Muslim women? Um, if Dr. Zainab, you'd like to address that first. Assalamu alaikum again. Um, the Prophet says that we could marry someone, like a man could choose a wife for her beauty, for her family lineage, for our wealth or for our faith. And he said that the right thing to choose a woman for will be for our faith. And I think for the woman is the same thing. You can you do decide to choose, you know, this handsome, gorgeous, you know, looking man for just that. Or you could, you know, choose him because he's rich and he can afford to buy things for you. Or you could choose him because it's from a you know, wealthy family or from a very important family, or you could choose it because it's a good you know, example of someone who holds his deen dear. I think the deen, of course, will be the most important reason why you're marrying this person, but I also think all the other criteria are also important. There is no, you know, you, you want to be careful that this person, one, doesn't have extremist views about women, because I've you know seen situations where 
people will get married and then the man will refuse to let the woman do anything. You have to stay in the house. You can't go to work. You can't even go to visit your family and things like that. So you want to be careful about this person's views about Islam. You want to ensure that he's educated enough, the same, similar to your level, because sometimes when there's disparities in this, that can then con cause conflict. You may not even be able to have, you know, very good conversations um, with yourself. So those are the kind of things you want to look at. You also want to look at char character. Character is very important. Does this person speak properly? Is he kind? Is he courteous? Is he, is he tactful? If somebody is doing something wrong and he sees this, is he going to, you know, admonish them in public and embarrass them? Or is he going to, is he the kind of person that would then, you know, call the person aside and admonish them with kindness? You know, those are the kind of things you look out for in a person. Of course, as Muslims, you may not have had the opportunity to actually meet this person first. It may be that this person was introduced to you, but there should be some kind of courtship, even if there's someone with you that will chaperone you and that will give you the option, you know, the opportunity to see this person or ask some questions. Or if it is the way in which many of us meet nowadays, which is you know, why you are in higher education or um, within Islamic communities like um, the Muslim Student Societies or the ISOC, then that will also give you the opportunity to observe this person from a distance to see how you relate to other people. I think those are very important. So the person is a Muslim, he believes in Allah, but there are some other things that keep, you know, relationship good. And those are the, you know, the character, the attitude, the speech. Uh, and, and I think those are even more important than whether the person has enough wealth to be able to care for you. Those, so far, the person has prospects. That's okay. Not necessarily that the wealth is there, there and then. You can build the wealth together or you can, you know, work together. And there's nothing wrong in parents supporting, you know, their children initially to help them, you know, stand on their feet if you have the means, because it's better that they are married than to to have to, you know, be involved in Zina or any other fitna around the world. So if if two adults, people like themselves and they want to get married, if they don't have the means, why can't the family support them? So those are the kind of things you want to look out for. Yeah, mashallah, I completely agree. And um, I think it's so important what you said about like, not just um, the kind of like the religious aspect of what a man is like, but also just like as he is as a person. Um, like you said, like the character and what he's like and the kindness that he shows other people, etc. Um, yeah, I think it's important that people have like very um, like deep conversations pre-marriage to ensure that like the person you are thinking about getting married to kind of fits your criteria in the sense that like to reference what floating man said in the comments I read earlier, understanding of Islamic priorities of pre-marriage is also important. And that's true because if you think if both kind of uh, people know what they have to do in a marriage and understand their responsibilities and their duties, then that's a very good like, first step. And in relation to what you said, Dr. Zainab, about how like some um men don't like let women do things um in the sense of like um I know that um, a man, sorry, like a woman, um, one of the things that she has to do is that I read a hadith that says the jihad, the jihad sorry, of a woman is taking good care of her husband. And um, something else that was mentioned was like obedient. And um, I think some people will like read that and think um, like obedience, they have like, control over their wife. Um, but in reality, like that's not exactly how it is. So I'm like a sense of understanding of religion, but also like, like also being understanding of the woman and not kind of um kind of abusing the authority that men are given in the sense that like yes we do have to ask for permission um to like leave the house but some men might deny the wife to like leave the house to go to work like you said or whatever it might be so there are things to be discussed like pre-marriage to make sure that what you are going the person you're going to be marrying is someone that of like if you have a job or if you want to spend time with friends um and all that sort of stuff but um actually yeah, trace and like you said about like the character and stuff like um i think like aside from religion just as a person and you kind of look for 
everyone's going to be like different you're going to have things that you're going to like write down a list it's going to be things that you want your person to be like but in general like for me um someone who's like patient and um like understanding willing to make compromises compromises I think someone who prioritizes you is like a very good um thing to have as well because you need to prioritize each other at times there will be times where obviously like work and other factors of your life will become important too but in general just someone who like I said and um, prioritizes you and someone who's like open with their feelings because lack of communication can really like marriages I feel because if you don't share um like what upsets you what angers you and things like that and you're quiet and reserved rather than like express it and like no one's gonna know like why you're angry or like why you're upset with your significant other so yeah uh, open with your feelings is really something that a good um kind of trait to have both ways and um yeah someone's a good influence um on you and someone who's gonna like you know, steer you towards a lot and just be a better person, um, not just a better Muslim. And um, yeah, I think it's just like kind of personal, really. I mean, personally, I feel like I want someone who's like open to traveling because um, I, I, I like to travel and I feel like doing it with your significant other is also like a good bonding activity. Um, someone who's like financially generous and stuff, like someone who is going to be like, well, stingy, you know, both ways as well. Um, just you're going to be able to spend money each other and whatnot. And um, yeah, just things like that, really, personally. <laughs> Jazakallah, Rukaya, and Jazakallah again, Dr. Zainab. That was really, really insightful. Um, before I mention what I'm going to mention, I just want to mention again that um, viewers who are just joining us, or viewers who have joined us from the beginning of the show, that this is a discussive show. So please do not come here expecting us to give you textbook answers, number one. And so yes, just please keep in mind of that, that it's not like a question and answer. But if we do have the knowledge and we have lovely Dr. Zainab here with us, we will try our best to answer it if we do have the knowledge or at least signpost you to the correct place. And before I move on, I think I saw a question that said, um, do are women allowed to work? Yes, women are allowed to work in Islam but they don't have to, it's not obligatory upon them to work. So if a woman doesn't want to work, she doesn't have to work. And again, if you are looking for a partner um, and you are someone who doesn't want to work or someone who does want to work, that is something that they that you should mention to them or bring up to them before you actually get married to them. And I don't know if anyone else will agree with me, but um, Dr. Zainab, I think that at the end of the day, people aren't perfect. Like none of us are perfect, even me, as much as we um, <laughs> may not want to admit it sometimes. but so I personally don't think that you would find someone that has what you 100% want, in my opinion. For example, someone could have like 70% of what you want, but that 30% could really put you off that they don't have, or they may do something that like annoy you unintentionally. So I think in choosing um, a spouse, you have to prioritize what is more important to you. For example, for me, um, my priorities are um, the religion, their character, like to how they are and their personality. So that's actually, even though I'm someone who likes to go to the gym, that is a priority for me over whether the guy does exercise or goes to the gym or not. And I also think that because um, people aren't perfect and someone may not have all the traits that you want at that moment, sometimes a lot of people can change. Like we notice it as well, like what we do now, like we may not have been doing two, three, or even a couple of months ago. So it's up to, I think, like how the person as well is going to progress and if they have something in mind. And Dr. Zainab, I don't know if you've heard of this book, but there is a book that we recently got, um, <laughs> all three of our sisters got in purpose of this show and it was gifted to us as well by one of our parents. It's called 101 Questions to Ask Your Spouse. And it does have more questions than 101, but it has, it's split into five categories of um, religion, personality, compatibility, lifestyle, and I think history. And it has questions that you would have thought to ask a future spouse or questions that you wouldn't have thought to ask a future spouse. And when I read this book, even though I'm not looking for marriage right now, but when I read this book, it made me realise what, like, I would ask, so, like, what I would prioritise in looking for a potential spouse and Dr Zainab I don't know if you have um 
anything to add on to what I've said, please? Mm. Well, what I can add to that is to acknowledge that perfection only belongs to Allah. So none of us can be perfect. And marriage is the, you know, is the joining of two imperfect people who then strives, you know, to create harmony within that imperfect frame. And they, there needs to be a lot of forgiveness. There needs to be a lot of I'm sorry and patience and patience for, for that union to then work. But there are some basic things, that, as we've said before, that you want to look out for. And the faith and the fear of Allah is the most important. But you also want to be careful about the person's character, about the person's attitude. And you want to have a think about what you want. I've not read the 101 questions yet. I am certain it will be very interesting to go through. But it may not be necessary that this 101 question, you are going to ask it directly. There may just be 101 things that you want to think about so that you can be on the lookout for them. I can imagine that if you meet somebody um, that's been introduced to you and, or you've met in school or at work or in the community and you're both considering marriage and the first thing you do is bring out, you know, a list of questions. It might be off-putting actually. So it might just be things to to think about rather than to ask directly. And of course, it may also be things to ask ask directly if the opportunity arise but it probably shouldn't be first things you know listing question after question it could just be things that you you know the the book opens your eyes to those sort of things that you want to look out for or to, or you want to consider or you want to find out about you know maybe you haven't thought of it before one thing that i did and i and I've encouraged, you know, people who've asked me is long before I got married and when I, you know, was becoming interested in, you know, thinking about marriage, I looked, I, I, you know, wrote for myself three things hmm, that I would love that it's like would be without those three things. So, of course, the basic thing is that this person is a Muslim. That one is um, non-negotiable. But the other three things that I would want in the man that I want to marry, that would be a no-no if those three things are there, are not there. And then I also put three things that, you know, I would, you know, so this is three faults that I can overlook, although I don't like it. And Another three things that if it happens, that will be an end to that marriage as far as I'm concerned. So I was kind of clear in my head. So one of the three things that I would desire, apart from the fact that the person is a Muslim, is that the person is educated. And that was very important to me. It was also very important to me that the person, you know, is clean, is not a, takes care of themselves, and is not an untidy or a dirty person and it was important to me that the person was very tactful and can speak properly so that was those are the three things i was looking for apart from the fact that this person is muslim i wanted somebody who already had the fear of allah and who could teach me more of islam so that was one the three things that i know i could not you know cope with and which i did you know talk to my husband at the time before we got married was one, I I wanted to work. I loved my career as a doctor to be at the time, and I wanted to be able to practice uh, medicine. So I made it very clear that um, you know it's important to me that I'm able to work. I would be a very unhappy bride to be if you said, you know, I couldn't work. So he he didn't have any problem with that. The other thing that um, would would have you know meant no for me was that I know this is allowed by Allah and I'm not saying that I'm against it. I've you know given talks on it myself and if it is something you desire, why not?
I didn't want um, a polygamous marriage. And I did tell him that, I'm sorry, but, you know, if you intend to marry a second wife, you should let me know now. You know, I wouldn't want to be a part of a polygamous marriage. And he, he, he did tell me that he, he, that wasn't his future plan. Of course, who knows? Qadar Allah, anything can happen. But my desire at the time was that I wanted to be the only wife of this man. And if he agreed. The other thing that would have been a no-no if, if for any reason whatsoever, he raised his hand on me after we got married, then that marriage would end that day, I would have walked out of it. So I was very clear of those three things. Those are the three things, you know, that I I I I, I was clear about and the other three desires. The other things in between are things that we can walk through. So I think you have to be very clear in your mind what you're getting into and what you want for yourself before you 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 know go into a marriage. And I can yeah, I agree. An example, yeah. Yeah, sorry. Um, I mean, really sure what you were saying. I think keeping an open mind is really important because, like you said, no one's perfect. The book that we've all been reading, no one's going to answer like all 101 questions the way that you want them to. There might be some that you'd have to like overlook because, um, you know, the other things that they have answered you like instead. So there are some things that you overlook, but there are going to be some things that are like non negotiable. And then, in relation to what you said, the doctor saying, but I agree with the whole, um, the whole like wives thing and raising your hand and things like that like i said earlier about like how um you know women need to be obedient and things like that but like um it is important to know that you know men can't abuse his power and think that he has authority over the wife be controlling in that aspect and with the wives um yeah me personally i'm literally the same um i know that it is literally allowed like and there's nothing against it but personally like it would be one thing that I would have to state beforehand because preferences play a little bit of a part in it. And um, I think it's just kind of like important to know that. Um, I know like, for example, I know um, a woman and her husband got remarried years after they got married. And I don't think they kind of had this discussion and I don't think that the man want, knew that they wanted to get remarried in the future. But anyways, um, she was complaining that he stopped caring for her that she wasn't receiving like financial support and stability anymore and he wasn't making time for her and spending most of his time if not of his time with her with his wife so um yeah there are gonna be things that are, like deal breakers and like you said it was you it would me so, but, um yeah there are gonna be some things that like religiously are allowed that you might not want and that is one of them like, especially with work things as well um in relation to you know, a man can tell you um can forbid you from leaving the house but if you have to go to work then there's be a discuss beforehand to make sure that he doesn't mind you working you know he he knows that you only want to have like just um um just the one wife um and things like that so yeah that's what i wanted to add real quick yeah jazakallah here for that rukaya um, and just to add further to those topics as well, I think something else to really consider is going back to one of the most important factors, which is the religion. And we need to look more closely than how long the man's beard is, for example. All of that is superficial and you need to actually get to know the man in such a way that it is obviously still halal, keep it halal, but make sure that you understand that they're on the right, the same aqidah that you're on, um, because it's such an important part of marriage um, that you both agree on what is allowed in Islam and what is not allowed in Islam as well, um, because you don't want to be pushed into something that you believe is haram whereas um your husband believes it to be halal so i think it's definitely important that you make sure that the aqida is in match with each other but yeah as you guys have all mentioned um the the things that you should look out for as a Muslim woman, is you need to make it clear what things you want from the marriage and what you will not tolerate as well. And 
I, I think it's really important to kind of communicate and get those um, get those criteria across because you don't want to get into a relationship and then it ending up with a divorce. That is the worst case scenario. Um, so yeah, I think it's definitely worth it um, to, to do that. And um, also there's a comment here by Habib La Lochka, La Lochka. I'm not sure if I said that correctly. Um, I've heard the co that couples arguing with each other, it's healthy for their relationship. And if they never end up arguing, it's unhealthy. What do you guys think about that? Mm. Okay. Think, okay. Oh, I was sorry. I was going to say that maybe Dr. Zainab should answer this question. Yeah, I think so too. Well, I guess I don't know if it is called argument, but you can have discussions and there's nothing wrong in having differing opinions. You don't have to agree on every topic. I think what is important is respect and knowing that sometimes when you have differing opinion, one person, you either should find you know, something in the middle that would then work for both of you and if that is not possible, sometimes one person needs to give in to the other. And at other times, the other person needs to give in to the other. And I think for a healthy relationship, it's about, you know, each person going the extra mile for each for the other person and not necessarily wanting anything back, you know, in return. But it's good to be mindful of each other's needs and not to be unnecessarily controlling and to be respectful of each other. So you can actually be having, you know, there's no way two people are going to live together for a long time and not have, you know, periods when they disagree or when they are not happy with each other. But that doesn't mean you should be disrespectful. That doesn't mean you should shout, you know, at each other. That doesn't mean you should use bad words against each other because any of those things when it is dropped it's very difficult to pack so you need to be very patient with each other and you need to even when you're quarreling be respectful and be understanding and know that the ultimate goal is to resolve this issue rather than cause problems so but sometimes one person will give in the other times another person will give in or if possible you know you always find something that will work for both of you and so I don't know about arguing, but you can have discussions and you can have differing opinion. Yeah, definitely. Jazakallah khair for that. I think, yeah, as you mentioned, it's so important to have um, a compromise. Um, if you are having a disagreement about something, obviously that's not... Um, that's not clear cut in terms of Islamically. I think if there's a disagreement between husband and wife, then definitely a compromise is something that should be discussed. And as um, MA has mentioned here, communication is key. So Jazakallah khair for that, sister. And we're going to move on, inshallah, to marrying outside of... Um, outside of your culture so i don't know if dr zainab you would like to address that first okay well i i guess our, our most important culture is islam isn't it and regardless of where we are from in the world so far we're muslims we should have identifiable culture so I would actually probably use my own example here. My own parents also, they were an intercultural marriage, but unfortunately their marriage didn't work out that well. I think it lasted about three or four years before they, they broke up. And then I still went ahead and had an, you know, a marriage outside my culture as well. But I'm almost 30 years in that marriage. So... I guess it depends on the two people. The What I learned from my own parents' breakup is the fact that maybe they, both of them were quite young and um, I think they allowed 
family to influence some of their decisions very early on. And um, I think that affected how they then manage conflicts that they had. And it was obvious that these people, these two people loved each other. And even when they were broken up, it was obvious that they did. But for some reason, the difference in the culture didn't work out for them. And I learned a lot of things from from what went wrong with them. And um, so I, I had, you know, very clear discussions with my husband. And I went into my own marriage, you know, one with two things. I know I'm marrying outside my culture, but I went knowing that my mother-in-law is my mother. And I will treat her exactly the way I'm going to treat my mom. Um, I'll be kind to her. If I'm going to buy gifts, if I don't have money to buy two that are similar to that I'm going to give my mom and her at the same time, then I'm not going to buy it. So I'm going to treat her exactly the way I would love to treat my mom. I'm going to go with an open mind to absorb myself into their culture. So I'll learn how to cook their food. I'll learn how to eat their food. I'll join them in their celebrations. So fights a lot. I'll try and learn the language. And of course, when we first got married, we actually did then go to live in my husband's city. And it was a most, you know, absolutely lovely experience. I think when we are going into when we're marrying outside our culture, it's about going with an open mind. And we should go with the intention of being part of them. And we should go with the open openness enough to, you know, we should go to be, to be surprised and be amazed. We should, you know, leave any, any um, prejudice or any thoughts that we have about that culture before we go, go in. And I think that is very important. So I'm I'm Yoruba, and my mom is um, Fulani, both of um, Senegalese, Malian kind of heritage. But then I then married. I grew up in Nigeria. I then married somebody who is Kanuri from Borno State, and my marriage was the first time that I was going beyond the lorry, <laughs> and and you know, g- and going all the way to Medjugorje, where I first lived for a few years, and I worked there as well. And of course, that for a Yoruba girl growing up in Ibadan and who is then living in Medjugorje, there was some culture shock, but I didn't let it affect me. So, for instance, I remember going to the market. The first time I wanted to go to the market, my husband said, oh, you will go with me. I said, why? He said, no, just don't worry. I'll go with you so I can carry the bags or something. He made a joke of it. And then I went to the market and I didn't see, you know, it's it's. You know, in, in Ibadan, it's market women. In Meduguri, it's market men. You hardly will see, you know, a woman, you know, selling things in the market. So I understood why he felt the need to go with me. And then that became a pattern when I want to go. Because I want to buy the food stuff myself. That's what I'm used to. He wouldn't stop me, but he would go with me and, um, and, and you know, accompany me throughout the market, which is, you know, very interesting thing the other thing that was in those early days was you know during the Eid I then dressed up I wanted to go for Eid and then he said are you sure you want to go to Eid you know Eid in Medjugorje is mainly the children the very old women or the men that attend but I insisted on going how can it be Eid and I won't go my husband didn't stop me and I did go and I, I think I was the only woman of my age grade at the eat, eat ground, and then nobody taught me not to go next time, <laughs> you know, those kind of things. But he didn't stop me, he would he kind of cautioned me. And when I said, Oh, I want to go, he did, we, didn't, we didn't quarrel about it. And I think occasionally we still, you know, laugh about my first experience of eat in, in mid degree. So, you know, those, those are the kind of little things that I noticed, but I didn't let it affect my relationship with people. I amassed myself when they are going for weddings. If I don't know how to, what dressing I'm expected to, I'll just call one of the aunties and watch what they wear. And then I'll dress the same way or choose the same kind of uh, material. So, and, and, you know, they would eat together in, in a tray and I'll just join them and eat with them. And it was lovely. And I learned a few words of the language. And I think that was a very 
nice way of getting, you know, to be accepted by the people. Yeah. <laughs> Jazakallah for that, Dr. Zainab. And that sounds like a very cute but funny story. I can imagine the shock as well of going and seeing it's um, like it's a man, just the men who are working in the market rather than women, which is what I know I'm used to as well. And like Dr. Zainab mentioned, um, I think the most important thing or one of the most important things is the religion and slash the person's practicing level o over culture. Because in Surah Al-Hujurah as well, Ayah 13, Allah says that um, we've been created for male and female and we've been made into tribes and nations so that we should, so that we may know one another. So there's no like discrimination or there should be no discrimination from pe to other people if they're not from the same place as you or from the same culture as you. And me personally, I'm not opposed to marrying someone outside of my culture. And I even remember that one time my younger brother said that for him as a Muslim, because he's a Muslim, his first thing is the religion. That's the first thing on his checklist. And then everything else comes after that. You know, I mean, where they're from doesn't matter as long as they are practicing. And I think that's very important for us Muslims to remember. Of course, you can marry people for a variety of different reasons, which we mentioned earlier. Dr. Zainab kindly mentioned it from the hadith as well. But like, we shouldn't discriminate onto other people. And so yes, I know my preference is to marry someone from within my culture, but I'm not opposed to marrying someone from outside of my culture as I would rather have someone who is on my wavelength in terms of religion and religious practice from outside of my culture than someone who isn't necessarily on my wavelength. And just to reiterate that point as well, in Surah Al-Rum, Ayah 22, it says, and of his signs, of Allah's signs, is the creation of the heavens and the earth and the diversity of your language and colours. So, mashallah, like, having, having an interracial relationship and marriage sometimes can be very beautiful. Yeah, and I agree 100%. Sorry. <laughs> You're okay, finished. Sorry. No, 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 go on, go on. Okay, um, I was going to say you're completely right. I think I would definitely choose um, my side of my culture. Like, it's not a bad concept. And I just feel like um, I've heard one too many people who have like, turned down proposals due to, like, tradition and culture. And I think it's because some people have, like, a very particular mindset and a little bit of, like, closed-mindedness and um, in terms of, like, who they want their child to marry or who they actually might want to marry. Um, and when someone, like, doesn't kind of fit that criteria, despite being, like, a good candidate for marriage, like, the hand gets turned down and too often like people focus on culture and let it cloud like religion in the sense that like we can't really be turning down proposal due to like cultural differences I feel like personally I think like our generation is a lot more like open-minded about who they marry and that's like how it should be I think it's like understandable that the older generation want to like their marry their they want their children sorry to marry um similarly to how they were um in order to like honor tradition and to keep the culture and stuff and like to continue but I feel like it's not really um enough of a reason to really turn down someone like don't get me wrong like you said preference is always fine and if you want to find someone um who does kind of fit the criteria that you're looking for and within your culture and stuff that it's um it's really good but um like I know that um an example that I'll give you real quick is like someone was proposed to and like this man wasn't part of like the tribe that the family of the female were wanting and um the mother asked like the external family for their opinion on this union and eventually like they didn't get married because of this like ideology that the marriage between a male and a female of these like two different tribes is doomed um like essentially they were saying that like the female's family have this like notion that if they got married then the marriage is like almost um like destined to fail and that's like one of the reasons why religion really needs to be like the main priority and why sometimes you do need to kind of overlook it in the sense of like depending on like um your circumstances and stuff but depending um sorry like if you're turning down a guy despite him being a good man and having come from like what's considered to be a good family then i just like I don't think it's right if that makes sense like um like bearing in mind actually that this female was a, divo a divorcee and despite like tradition being followed the first time um and the man being from the tribe that the family initially wanted yet that still ended in divorce so you know what I mean like I just think um keeping an open mind in terms of culture is important because sometimes you can let that kind of overlook religion and that's something that we, we definitely shouldn't be doing Yeah, definitely. And we have a, qu a comment here um, that the good things in culture I love and celebrate like the food. 
Um, so yeah, Jazakallah khair for that. We should definitely be um, looking, we shouldn't be looking at culture as the number one thing. It's more about deen, as Ikram has said, and as Dr. Zainab has mentioned as well, and Ruqayya, of course. So Jazakallah khair for that. Um, but moving on, inshallah, um, how do you get to know someone in the halal way? So, Dr. Zainab, can you please enlighten us on this topic, please? Okay, I think um, while we wait for Dr. Zainab. Um, can you hear me now? Yes, we can. <laughs> I think I, I forgot to unmute. I'm sorry. I was just saying that um, one thing we know is that ideally Islam would not really allow free mixing of, you know, men and women who are not Baharam or without your hijab. You understand? So one until you are married, you shouldn't really be in that person's presence without, you know, properly dressed. And that's number one. Number two, if you're going to go to places together, then I would say you should be in the open or you should have a chaperone with you. And that is doable. I don't know if it's doable now, but it was definitely doable when I was, when my husband was cutting me. Number one is when, he, when we decided that we were going to be, you know, we we're going to, when we decided to get engaged, then we limited as much as we can our contacts with each other until we were really married. But any contact that we had, we always made sure we had chaperones with us. So we always have our friends around. So my husband never visited me alone, really for the few and we had a very long courtship because i was still in school and he had just graduated and our parents didn't want us to get married until you know i'd finished my university and he had um finished his um got a proper job as that was finished our job and and finish his nysc so but we were ready to get married if they had allowed us we would have gotten married immediately but they didn't and we wanted to respect their wishes so for the two years plus that we were cutting before we got married, we, we didn't see each other. I think we saw each other once every six months or so. But in that time, we'll have our friends with us. We'll never see ourselves alone. And um, or we'll have family with us. So that was something that we, was very important to us. But we wrote letters. So we wrote letters. So most of the questions, and we did um, phone calls as well because that was what was available in the in the late 80s when when he proposed so but but so just you you know what the limits of Allah is and you want to whatever you want to do as much as possible you want to do it within that boundary and and, and I think that is very important don't be alone in in a room with somebody that you're not married to because the third person with you would be shaitan and um, it takes very split second to be tempted and um, some of these those things that can possibly happen if if you're not married and you're alone with a man that is not a spouse you know there are very major sins within islam so if you want it to be very careful i know that the society now is a lot more permissive but our culture as i say is the culture of islam and we need to you know protect ourselves and protect the person we intend to marry because at the end of the day the the proposal the engagement the you know the um, cutting or the the period before your your marriage and the marriage itself is is to fulfill the sunnah of the prophet so you want to make sure that you do it properly yeah just Dr. Zainab and I also completely agree. I don't really have anything else to add other than what Dr. Zainab said, which was keep a mahram or your mahram involved. 
and I definitely agree especially in this day and age as a young adult ladies it is quite tempting to believe that even a Muslim boy who says that he wants to get to know you before he meets your dad or he needs to sort himself out first before he's like before like you're properly courting or you know he needs to get a job people will say so many excuses nowadays but don't accept it just as Dr Zainab reiterated because either a mahram is involved from the beginning or that person walks away I think a lot of people feel like when a mahram is involved like they have to come to a conclusion and that conclusion has to be positive but you the reason why a mahram is involved is so that you can like if you say you don't want to marry the person you can actually say that freely and without any restriction or some type of um like debt or feeling like you owe the person so that's one of the reason why we actually involve a mahram number one and if someone says that they need to sort themselves out or they need to like get a job or they still have stuff to do before they marry you then that's fine they can sort themselves out by themselves you don't have to be involved in that entire you don't have to be with them or involved with them throughout the entire time that they're getting themselves together because I think it's very important to remember as well that in Surah Al-Hazab it says and when you ask of them so when you ask of the women they, it was talking about the Prophet's wives وسلم, it was saying when you ask of them ask it of them from behind a curtain that is pure for you and for them and the tafsir on this ayah is that even though the etiquette, the etiquette here was mentioned regarding the attending of social gatherings, um, it was still relevant for the entire ummah and a reminder for us to keep our distance. Because like Dr. Zainab said, when there's two people alone, like two non-mahrams or two people who aren't like married, the second, the third person is shaitan. So those are etiquettes that we should remember, like we should remember that there are non-mahrams until we are actually married even when we're engaged even though when they're there, our fiance they're still a non-mahram until we have done the nikah yeah definitely i 100 percent agree with everything that ikram and dr zainab have mentioned here and i think as well just to add to that um the mahram and getting making sure that you have a wali involved as a muslim woman you aren't allowed to get married without your father's permission or you know if your father's not in that place then whoever your next um guardian is is supposed to be your wali and if you are for example a new muslim then at least get the imam of the mosque involved as well so that you still have someone um who's responsible um and you know also, it, it helps in identifying like certain things and compatibility wise, someone else is able to help you in helping, in, in finding um, and pointing out characteristics that you might not like or that you might like. So getting a, another perspective on the potential future spouse. So Jazakallah Her um for that inshallah and um now we're gonna address how long is too long to get to know someone dr zainab please well um i i wouldn't say i know of any prescription as to how long but I know that the general rule will be for it to be as short as possible. It shouldn't be too long, if possible. We want to make it as short as possible. And that is to make sure that fitna doesn't come in. But you also want to give yourself enough time to ask all those relevant questions that you want to ask or to get to know, you know, um, you, if you have a wali, you want them to find out things about the family or you want to have that time. You don't want to rush into it. You want to be sure that this is what you really want. Yeah. For me, mine, I know, was a bit longer than we would have wanted it to be, but it wasn't entirely due to our fault. It was because our parents just insisted that, okay, you're not marrying until you've got a job. 
and you are not married until you finish school. And then that's lasted for another year, um, about two, two years plus before we were able to actually get married. But what we then did was to put things in place to make sure that we don't fall into any fit now, any trap. And, and that just meant we, we just didn't see each other. <laughs> we saw each other we, once or twice a year and that's it until we got married and we mainly communicated, you know, by letter. So I still have loads of letters from about 30 years ago. Some of them are very interesting to read. Yeah. So that, that was what we did. But then it would depend. I've seen people who married within two months of, you know, being introduced. I've seen people who married within four months. I've seen, seen those who married within six years. And all the marriages have all been, you know, absolutely lovely, successful. And I've seen those who, you know, cutted, you know, in quotes for so long. And then when they finally got married, the marriage didn't, didn't last at all. So I guess many of us, this also uh, depends on the grace of Allah. When you do meet somebody that you intend to marry, you want to make sure you pray about it. You do istikhara and um, you ask Allah for guidance. And if that person is not the right person for you, Allah, we, you know, move you away from that person and will move that person away from you and then it will bring the person that he is meant for that would you know be the the person that will fulfill your dunya and your hereafter and your and your religion and and, and and your livelihood and then Allah will replace that person with it for you. So it's important to be very prayerful and to ask Allah for guidance when you are making that decision. Okay, and on that note, we're going to close today's show. Um, Jazakallah khair to all of the listeners for their participation and especially Jazakallah khair to Dr. Zainab for joining us today. Um, we really do appreciate it. And um, don't forget to tune in next week, same time, Friday at 5 o'clock um, for next week's show on Sister Speak. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you so much for inviting me and thank you for the listeners. <laughs> and the comments and the questions. Yeah, it's been very helpful. Oh, Jazakallah for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.